Okay, hello again. This is Rodney Utt at uh, 966 Chelem, which is a job I've got underway. Just uh, left uh, the Montecito job on Hot Springs. It was an unbelievable ADU with big vaulted ceilings and really nice clean framing and all kinds of clean details. And now we're over at my job, which is really a mess. <laughs> it's a mess with the rain and it hasn't been cleaned up this week. It's going to get cleaned up later today before the end of the day. But I just want to show you some framing details. Um, there's a bunch of blocking. Uh, now, I don't, uh, as far as I know, I don't think blocking is required. It's nice to do it at four feet. You have to block a wall that's uh, 10 feet, or maybe over eight feet, but the 10 feet walls have to be fire blocked. But I think these guys block walls, and I think that um, the code is you have to block uh, one bay over from each corner, but these guys go ahead and block all the way, which I'm pretty, um, Oh no, I take it back, that's a shear wall. That's why that's blocked like that. Um, so they have nailing, they have to have edge nailing on the shear wall. And up here you can see the A35s, which have to be, like I said before in the last video, top plate to freeze block uh, pretty much everywhere where a roof lands on a, uh, a wall, on an exterior wall. And you can see some of the that white um, tubing is, uh, uh, that's Romex. That's Romex. Okay, that's just Romex. And then this tubing, this is tubing right here. That's for the uh, water line that feeds the refrigerator, uh, chilled water, and ice maker. This job is wrapped right now. Uh, lath is not finished. Uh, it just basically dried in with a Tyvek house wrap and uh, Tyvek stucco wrap. This is uh, uh, the garage door opening, which has given me uh, fits and continues to do so. That's another story. Let's go in and take a look at the framing because Jim asked me to uh, to deal with framing, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. So I've got new and old framing in here. Um, you can see the new framing is pretty obvious. That, that wall's actually been um, furred, needed to be furred out. Uh, this is a shear wall, which I showed you the outside of, and that's why we have that blocking. This wall is blocked because it's uh, over 10 feet to the plate. It's uh, what we call balloon framed, which is what gable end walls should be, and not western frame because it creates a hinge on a gable end wall, and I will explain that. Um, but right now, suffice to say that this wall is now framed right. Nailing plates over uh, wherever the drywall guys could hit something. We got insulated water pipes. Uh, we have nailing plates over them. Uh, insulated hot water. I got gas coming from the utility room, which is our, will be our new gas stub. Coming to the new laundry location. Uh, fireplace framing. Let's see if I can get some better light. How am I doing on battery here? I better check that. I'm trying to keep my finger out of the lens, too. I know you guys hate that. I know I hate that. Okay, I got um, 61 minutes of battery. I don't want to do it. All right, another shear wall. <clears throat> you can tell by the, by the nailing. This was the extension. This, uh, this job was Seipel trusses. This was an exterior wall where I'm standing right here. And we pushed it out. I, know, I forget how many feet. Looks like about 12 feet. The living room with a new shed roof that California's onto this existing roof. And ask me about a California roof, and I'll tell you about it. All these rafters are hung um, with uh, a U26 hanger, and uh, or maybe these are two by eights. Yeah, I think they're two by eights. U28 hanger with the bottom cut off because they thought it was going to get sheeted all the way up to there, but they could have left the bottoms on of those hangers. Um, because this is all getting TNG, but that's all getting softened. So everything you see here running on this beam, this Paralam beam, this LVL, which um, this existing uh, site-built trusses were shored with a shoring wall, like right along here, and then the exterior wall is removed, and this beam was put into place after the footings were poured. Of course, there's a footing under there, and there's a footing underneath this post here. You can see, yeah, it was all undercut. It was undercut beneath the existing slab and then formed in the new footing, pretty good size um, uh, pad footing. 
to support the post. You can see the strap uh, right there. It uh, straps the beam and it bends down and strapped on the post underneath the shear. Then this beam, I'm going to fur out. So this this uh, gets isonine because it's uh, it's a volume ceiling, and I don't want to have to vent these rafter bays. So I am going to isonine it with foam, and then on TNG, it's going to get um, panel with TNG the ceiling, and then all of this uh, Smurf tube uh, ductwork. Uh, let's see, I've got gas running there, uh, a bunch of data. I guess all my uh, Romex and stuff is run uh, through, um, board and run through the rafters. But all this stuff is going to get, um, this is going to become a chase. So I'm going to box this in, probably well, with drywall maybe, or maybe with this uh, uh, same stuff that we're going to TNG with and make a big box here that covers all that stuff. Uh, I can draw that for any of you that are confused. Now, um, while I'm in this room, I want to tell you that the living room right here is uh, going to stay like this. In other words, these site-built trusses are going to show. Now, we're going to clean them up a little bit, these plywood gussets. We've got some denailing to do, and we're going to take a wire brush to them. They all paint out. So drywall will go all the way up this gable end wall all the way up to the ceiling. The ceiling gets no drywall. It gets exactly what you see there, only painted. Now that's the one by six sheeting that was installed for the original uh, shingle roof. That's all you need is, is the spacing on that sheeting because the shingles just, uh, you know, they only need that one piece of nailing. Uh, so when we stripped the roof, we left the one by six on and then we dropped one by fours in um, just so you, um, so let's see, we could have left them out and then sheeted on top of that and you just seen the recess uh, between each one and seen the plywood and this way you're going to see wood all the way along and it'll all get painted. So if you can try to envision this painted, it's going to be a volume ceiling with these trusses showing. Um, the owner had seen it somewhere and really liked it so she's doing it here and you can see some of the strapping. We got some really big straps. And it's uh, called out you know, on our plan, and uh, they all have to be put in. Our inspectors are very careful, and they uh, they found a couple of areas where uh, the strapping was off, and a couple of things that needed to be fixed. Uh, we were called on, and we got them fixed. Well, we've got this wall in for a revision because we had to um, reframe it because it was so flimsy and so out of plumb, and the owner wanted to change uh, the two windows from the plan to three windows. So now we've got a get a, a revision, and, um, uh, but we can keep going. And we are, we are keeping going. Of course, I've been told to do that at my own risk, and I'm willing to take the risk. Okay, so let's look at some other framing in here. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty trippy, huh? So no drywall. Um, I think we'll probably uh, take the bottom of this paralam that we're going to box and chase, and I think we'll probably bring it in, in cover bring it out to and finish it, and maybe a little bit of lead in, relieve for the bottom of the TNG, and just stop the solid TNG uh, on that box so we can cover all those hangers too. Yeah, we'll, we'll, that, that'll be the finish work part, but you know, you gotta anticipate the finish when you do the framing, because everything affects everything else, remember? Everything affects everything else, and I mean everything. We don't need drywall nailing here because we don't have a ceiling. Normally, um, I need a pointer. I usually have a laser pointer. Okay, so, no wait, here's a great pointer right here. Look at that, that was made to be a pointer. Uh, what's in my pocket, my phone? Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry for, sorry for, for dithering. I, I feel like the absent-minded professor right now. All right, I'm gonna put my phone <clears throat> in my belt clip. I know you, none of you needed to know this, but you're with me. Okay, so if this were a regular ceiling, right, it was going to get drywall across these joists, then you'd need to put a two-by here for nailing to catch the drywall ceiling. Same thing here. If this drywall were going to be on these ceiling joists and then come across as a ceiling, you'd need to get a nailer, obviously, on this wall 
to catch the drywall. But since this is volume and these are staying um, open, we don't need to do that. Pretty interesting piece of framing here. This is the kitchen, by the way. And uh, when we get into that, I hope to be able to show you some uh, the kitchen plans and since I, I designed it based on what the owner wanted. And, and you know, while I know we're going to be doing plumbing too, but you can see the vents. Uh, that vent's dirty armed. These vents, uh, vents are all tied in to one vent. So um, we've got to clean out on the outside of that one. That vent comes over, ties into the laundry vent. That's the laundry. That's the laundry drain. That's also um, right here. That and that is water softener and um, uh, I don't know, let's see. Is the air what else is? So the water softener's got condensate. Is it the air conditioner condensate? I'm not sure, but these are these are, con these are condensate lines that have to be plumbed. In this case, pumped and then plumbed to a sanitary waste, and they're going to plumb. They're plumbed to the um, the washer waste. Fireplace framing was as advertised, and it looks like the fireplace went in pretty darn easy. We've got to get the um, the chimney stuccoed, stuccoed before I can do the roof. So let's go look at some of this other framing. Um, this was a remodel, this part. So uh, this was an uh, existing wall. It got reframed brand new. I'm not sure why. I think something happened to this bedroom. Um, this is some of the existing framing. You can see existing framing in the bathroom. Probably have pretty bad light in here. The ceiling was a major pain. To frame because it has all these openings it has a skylight opening, has a return air opening right there, and has a, and has a, an access opening right there. Yeah, come on down. You know that's return air, right? Yes, of course you do. Okay, let's just go into this room. This wall got um, this existing framing got um, got reframed. Uh, got an opening. Um, a slider was pulled out. Put a window in. You can see the. Triple studs above, existing plates, new um, rough sill, uh, a double sill, existing framing. Let's see, yep, this is going to be covered. This will be a drop ceiling. So this gets a drop ceiling, hard drop ceiling. So this all gets a drywall on the ceiling. This gets a drywall on the ceiling. Okay, let's come on down to a new part of the framing. So this is all new framing. New framing, yeah. New framing. New headers, new skylight well framing. Pretty cool. The way that's uh, headed off, the way they, they frame this based on the sky well, skylight. Get the drywall ceiling. See our uh, ductwork is going in right now. These fans, this this uh, ceiling fan will tie into the other bathroom ceiling fan, and then they'll exit high wall with like a dryer vent on this eastern wall, rather than a roof penetration. I like to uh, to limit the roof penetrations as I can. You can see the plumbing in here, and we'll go over plumbing, I guess, in another another uh, episode. Uh, when Jim gets the plumbing, which I think is coming right up. So let's walk into the master bedroom. It's got framed in 2x6 instead of 2x4. Um, we, we changed uh, the framer's bid. We asked him to upgrade to 2x6 uh, because as it turned out, with the grades the way they were, uh, we did a 2x4 um, stem wall here. It went to 2x6 framing. This is a volume ceiling too, just just uh, per plan. The ceiling joists are gonna stay the way they are. The rafters, up between the rafter spaces, uh, will get isonine because it's a volume ceiling and if we put in bad insulation, we'd have to vent each bay out the eaves and it's a, it's a pain and it's uh, inviting uh, moisture and other things. So by doing uh, foam, 
we can go ahead and, and cover it and we don't have to vent them. And we're going to cover it with TNG. Again, this is going to skin with a, a 1x6 TNG. So just the bottom of that ridge will expose and all these ceiling joists will be exposed. Uh, there's an A35 everywhere. I think it's on the outside there. Uh, it's funny that this was put up there for nailing. I need to get that out of there. That's all that is, is a nailer. And I need that to go away uh, because this drywall is going to uh, go all the way up. Now this is a balloon frame wall and blocked. So the framing goes all the way up and it's blocked in between because it's over 10 feet. has to have fire blocking. But this nailer's got to go and I suspect. And see they did not put a nailer over here, which is which is weird, uh, or if they did, it got pulled out, so. And these guys are here, uh, at my behest, to catch the one by six, right? One by six in here, 